Words create thoughts. They can create beliefs in our mind. They can create concepts. They can create emotions. They can create you know, actions, you know, in our thought forms. And they can create you know, actions. Uh, so we should be conscious of the words that we use and we should choose our, our words wisely. Hey friends, this is Chris Jansen. Evil is the destruction of freedom. Welcome to the End Evil Podcast. Just wanted to draw your attention to a couple great things you can check out when you're done watching this show. Pop on over to Twitch and check out Brandon Spencer's 24 hour, 24 seven live stream coming at you with truth, freedom, natural law, all the time, every day. Also want to bring your attention to Mondays. You can check out my good friend Crip Rick on Revolution Radio at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. And now I have a great show for you. Thanks for joining me. Please stop on by to andevil.life and make a small donation or share something from the website. Subscribe to the channels and uh, enjoy the show. Check out the chemtrails. Oh, shit. I'm, I'm in hate. I'm in a prison. I'm in a mental prison and a physical one at that, and definitely a spiritual one, whether that's recognized at a conscious level or not. As I wake from my sleep, this situation's got me thinking deep. Will the earth the sink get all like this? Extinction evil creeps in your dream. Secret teams rolling me in the building, in the in-betweens. My control for the teens, now they got you on your knees. I'm making my way through this open maze, but I'm dazed by mass confusion. All the images that they're using. As the rest race to the tip of the top of the pyramid, the pyramid, the pyramid, calling in, you know, to this low level of spiritual awareness, such that these methods can have any effect over us. Welcome all. This is the And Evil Podcast. My name is Chris Jansen, and evil is the destruction of freedom. That's a quote from the book, The End of All Evil, by Jeremy Locke. If you haven't checked out that book yet, I recommend look it up now and uh, spend a quick day taking it all in. Because what's going on in the world is there's a big thing happening, and it's called slavery, and it's happening on a mass scale. It didn't stop when the chain stopped. It just moved to slavery 0.2.0 or 3.0, and it's more subtle now. And they control you with invisible chains. And mostly that's done through words and language and um, in the form of propaganda, in the form of tricky word phrases. So we had a great uh, chat last week with the One Great Work Warriors um, in which we talked about etymology definitions of words and um it was a great chat and we want to have some more of it so i brought on some folks this week to have a round table live discussion with me anyone in the audience who's watching or listening you also have the opportunity to join live with us now and throw in your two cents and uh, your two cents is worth a lot more than two cents with inflation <laughs> So, um, and we I'm should become conscious, you uh -oh. know, a speaker. Push the wrong button there. I'm going to bring in some friends here to get this conversation going on the power of words, the importance of words. I already have uh, the awesome Will Keller with me and the wonderful Leslie Powers and um, the honorable and super editor, Brandon Spencer. Thanks for joining me, guys. Um, glad to see you. Glad you could pop in. Um, thanks. I'm glad you made it. Uh, Leslie, I know you're having a little bit of computers doing something wacky. Guess you got working. Get you look beautiful tonight. 
Thanks and for having Will, us. I heard you saved some cats tonight from the heat. Yeah, my daughter Violet and I, we saved some kittens, um, found them earlier in the morning. It was already getting 90, so we took them in. Mom wasn't around, and uh, just 15 minutes ago, we kind of reunited the kittens with her mom, so successful. Right on. You're a hero in so many ways. Well, Will, we got um, Fred with us, we got Derek, and we got Chris Nelson, all star cast with us. So I'll let you... Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on um, our talk on um, words, etymology, clarity. Uh, Will, if you want to throw in any thoughts on that and then just pass it on to whoever uh, you want to next. And we'll um, hear, hopefully we'll hear from everybody. Just kind of um, pass it back and forth as casual and, and easy as we want to go with it. Excellent. Yeah, thanks for, for having us, uh, Chris. It's always a pleasure to be on here. Um, the episode last week that you guys did, The Power of Words, it was fantastic. Everyone brought powerful points on this vital topic of words, right? Language. This is the, the, under, the crucial underbelly of society, and it's our communication, right? This is the first step of the trivium is grammar. Words have extreme power vibratory power um they can be objective in nature meaning they have a concise meaning getting down to that origin of a word and this is all about decoding and conveying objective reality this is where words come into play uh this is also why the obfuscation from the social engineers want to um deceive and the the rel relativists and the revisionists of history always attack language and words if you cut the head off from language and grammar you've already infiltrated the level of available information and you you take down the level of communication between people and this is what we're here to do as one great workers as content creators as truth seekers modern philosophers this is what we're here to do is convey messages through the power of words. And uh, I've said many times, you can have a full-blown awakening to what is going on in the world just by understanding the etymology, the origins, and the true definitions of words compared to you know the, the modern colloquial understanding and how people perceive words nowadays. Um, all the great philosophers, the Stoics, um, the Platonists, always put an emphasis on language and words right after metaphysics. It was uh, right there. So you guys did a killer job. You added a lot to it. It's one I highly recommend people go check out. So I'll, I'll pass it over to uh, Brandon. Thanks, Will. And uh, thank you all for joining this wonderful conversation. And I have to thank Chris Nelson because without um, without you know his work, I wouldn't have not have come into those deeper understanding when it comes to language words and and you know like the concept when it comes to you know symbols because words are symbols and the metaphysical aspect that comes you know with that. So I'm always you know proud to honor his work and of course you know Mark Pascio's work and the great teachers you know work who come you know have before us because that's what it's all about is being more clear and bringing more clarity um not just to you know like ourselves and reality but to our understanding and um one thing or one word that always brings clarity you know when you use it is saying the word no you know and that's one thing that I wanted to talk about because I talked about uh, you know, understanding the importance of the definition of words. But when you say the word no, you're taking the stand. And that's really what we are, are, are all trying to encourage and inspire people to do is, is, is to start taking the stand in whatever way, you know, you can. And when you say the word no, you are actually bringing more power to yourself because you're saying, hey, I'm not going to let, you know, whatever, you know, happen. This is, you know, my line in the sand. And once you cross it, I'm going to take a stand. And therefore, I'm going to be in a position of power to, to, you know, to do what I have to do to, you know, to maybe stop your coercion, to maybe stop your threats, to stop your violence. So when we are, are talking about being clear, 
I think the biggest thing that we can be clear on is using the word no when it comes to the slave system, when it comes to tyrants, you know, you know, when it comes to um, you know, authoritarianism, using the word no, like there's no more clearer word than saying the word no, because when you tell someone no, you're saying, OK, I'm done, you know, one more inch and you know, I may react, I may, you know, use self-defense. So we need to start using this word no more than ever because, um, you know, too many people are still going along, you know, with the system. They're not refusing to 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 use their words, to use their voice, to use, you know, their speech to communicate. And that's why, you know, we have this saying, you know, like, you know, like silence, you know, pretty much is, is a means to, to offer to obfuscate and it's a means of distortion because you're not using the, the most powerful gift that she was given your voice to say no so you know there's you know there's a lot of power in just that one word brandon thanks for saying that it reminds me i was just going back through our video um at the end of this I, i'll probably play it if we have time i did a condensed version of our talk over the week and you at one point and it said sometimes it's good to just shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I was thinking about that. You know, it's something I've been working on ever since I've been speaking publicly. Um, you know, we podcast and you speak. It's good to talk. But you can also hear when people just start talking and they're not really saying anything. And we're always working on being more concise and not just spewing, but getting right, getting to a point, making it concise, simplify the profound the way that um, Will likes to say it. I, I think that's a great way to share that. And I wanted to just interject because I forgot I wanted to announce this in the beginning for folks listening. There is a type of silence and shutting the fuck up that sucks. And that's when you don't help. And that's when you're not part of the change that's happening in the world. The people that are speaking out, trying to bring this truth forward. If you don't feel like you have that voice, you can take the time to, let's say, transcribe what other people are saying. Like take this episode, download it, transcribe it, put it on the sub stack, add add pictures. There's a lot of ways to um, help talk about natural law publicly. And we all need help. Those of us that are content creators, it's a hell of a work and burden to get this stuff all published. And um, we need your help. We have a lot of jobs that aren't filled. We need people that are publishing this stuff in different forms and in different channels. And anything of mine is free to share. Copy it all you want and get it out there. That's why I'm making it. And that's why it's all for free. And you should be ashamed of yourself. If you understand this work and you haven't done anything, then you should not be shutting the fuck up. You should be speaking the fuck up. And I'll just say that. And I'm going to try to be a little more quiet from here on out because I really want to hear all these wonderful stars we have here. Um, Leslie, are you ready to go next? Otherwise, we'll go to Fred. Yes, sure. Hello, everybody. It's really wonderful to be here. Um, I was really excited uh, after listening to last week's show and it stimulated a lot of thoughts. So I'm gonna try to be concise um, with some of my thoughts to share. And I'm gonna pop off of a couple things that both um, you know, Will and Brandon said about <clears throat> you know, the, the vibration of words and the power of words as a boundary. And I also want to, you know, bring up that I think that we can understand the hermetic principles through words. We can learn about the hermetic principles and we can execute or, or activate consciously the hermetic principles through the use of words, right? Through the power of mentalism, through understanding correspondence and, you know, uh, similarities, metaphors, similes. We, words have vibration. We can think about seed syllables, both from like the runes have seed sounds, syllables make up words. So words are actually complex, very, you know, uses of syllables, which ultimately have a vibration. And certain sounds, certain words have different vibrations, higher vibrations, right? The Bible says um, in John 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was, the word was with God and the word was God. So it is through speaking that word, thinking and feeling that word that all is created and that the word I am 
with that phrase, you invoke your own God self right here and now. And so this key words, which, um, and I'm referring, actually, I'm kind of reading from a book, I Am Affirmations from Peter Mount Shasta, where there's, I'm an hour south of Mount Shasta, where there's the teachings of the I Am. And so there's, I think, um, some seeds of truth within there. And, and this piece of, of the word, I think, is really worth sharing. He says that this I is the twofold activity of the father fire electronic will aspect. And the am is the activity of the mother earth magnetic love aspect, both of which must function together to manifest the full creative power of the I am activity. So it's this gender principle and in effect that Cre cre gives the energy of creation and where we can activate the power of word. And so this can be through our affirmations, our positive use of words. And, and he also describes that this meditation of affirmation really needs to be amplified through the use of four aspects, verbal, our voice, visualizing, using our like third eye, feeling, bringing emotion and action. So it's the that alignment of thought, feeling, and action that is, um, you know, activates the power of word. And um, so the vibrations, again, could go back to mantra, seed syllables, ancient traditions, really activating the power of sound vibration, frequency, using polarity, rhythm, all of the aspects of the hermetic principles to, um, to, to activate and, and um, increase our consciousness and our connection to the divine source, right, through love and, you know, the, the spirit. So that's all I'll say now. Freya, do you want to go next? The... Um... So thank you, uh, Chris, for the invitation, by the way, I appreciate it. Um, words for me are magic. This is why we're using words as spell. This is why we are spelling the truth on our own words, on our own personality and character. So what I wanted to add is to add on Brendan's uh, commentary. It's words are double-edged swords. We, we do not put uh, enough emphasis on the education on how to use the languages. And, and uh, by experience is um, French and English language are very different, but kind of the same at the same time but this is this is hard to understand the the the, the little uh, nuances of the language and the way and the the intention behind the words and all the meta behind it so there's many factors that we have to look onto and its influence and that's why I'm keep on saying that it's magic magic is influence so the influence words have started wars war words are are have uh, have been used as a resolution so there's two aspect to this incredible uh study that is the language as such and it's a ve we have to respect it and use it with humility and 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 yes we have to be a fewer words when we're not doing the great work when we're not doing it on the internet we have to uh, be careful about and and not waste because this is precious energy talking is is using your force your your energy to project what you think what you feel so there's no this there's no separation there. It's everywhere, and 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 we are submerged. We are, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, uh, we're you, we're um, uh, I'm I'm losing my word by the way. Um, we're we're um, swimming into this sea of uh, of of plasma of energy, and that's why I I said we have to be very careful what with uh, uh, the 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 word we use, the intention behind it, and the desire. Because intentions and desires are two different things. So th this is what I want to to add to this. Thanks, Fred. You know, I thought of when you were talking, how many fights and wars have started with the words, what did you just say? <laughs> you know, right? It's just a couple words and a whole bunch of shit happened over and over and over all through history. So like you're saying, they're precious and important, man. A couple of the wrong ones can lead to death and who knows what else and far mm -hmm. worse. So Chris Nelson, thanks so much for joining us today. You got something on the tip of your tongue there you'd like to share with us? Yeah, I got a few things I could share. Right yeah, it's on. good to be amongst this uh, Inead of, uh, of thinkers and speakers. Thanks a lot, Brandon, for those uh, nice words. Glad to have put out the work that could uh, provide some insights to help people in their understanding. And uh, yeah, I guess I could continue with uh, magic. I think uh, Chris mentioned it was the first one to mention it last week. And that words are magic because just by speaking, you can influence others in a positive or negative way, as was just mentioned, uh, starting wars or whatever. And uh, and an interesting thing, I mentioned the, the Ennead, like the Ennead of gods in ancient Egypt. Well, in ancient Egypt, there were two of the gods or goddesses that were um, originally foundational concepts. There were only two. One of them is Ma'at, which most people know representative of morality, justice, righteousness, uh, law, moral law, obviously, and uh, other things related to balance and equilibrium and measurement. And the other one is Heka. And Heka was uh, the the concept of, of magic. So that's a, an important, I guess, a conceptual origin from Egypt, because even our alphabet comes from Egypt. And there's a lot of... Uh, things that originate in Egypt. And as Brandon was saying, um, <clears throat> I've mentioned in my work that if you think of it in the derivation of how we started to communicate, you know, you could say we, we started to grunt or we point at a tree and go like, uh, and then this was eh, and g, g or whatever. And then eventually those develop into different sounds. But when we amplify that communicative aspect, um, and we communicate by writing it down. The, the most logical form of communication you can come up with is pictographic representation. So and to represent a tree is you draw a tree. You don't come up with the abstraction of individual letters that compound into words in order to represent a tree. That's an abstraction of a later derivation and conceptualization that the power of our human consciousness can, can employ. But at first is a, is a pictogram, or a pictograph, and that's what hieroglyphics were. So whether Sumer um, derived their language before ancient Egypt, I believe that the origins of the hieroglyphics in Egypt is what came first, whether that came from Atlantis or whatever before. But that's logically what came first in my mind. And I view Egypt as older than Sumer, but it might, I might be wrong. But those are just my beliefs, just based on, on the language. That uh, cuneiform is a more abstraction of, of lines and wedges, and it's creating a more of an abstraction that's a later development than a simple pictogram. And so I place a lot of emphasis on uh, on Egypt for the source of many ideas. And apophysis is one related to what Brandon was saying too, uh, for no, um, because no is the negation of something. And that's what uh, apophysis is. And that relates to apophysis and Isis. And Isis relates to Ma'at, as I went through in my latest presentation on morality. Um, 
And interesting, we've been talking about uh, the God said, uh, let there be light, or the God, God said, he created with words. So let there be light was the words he used, and the word was with God, and the word was God. These different symbolic and metaphorical and allegorical representations trying to elucidate certain concepts. And if you look at logos, you know, it relates to, that's what is supposed to be the word of God was logos. And logos is also the, um, the origin, well, the, the root of logos is leg or lek, which in uh, lecture, so reading. In French, the word for reading is, is lecture, so that's reading. And if you're giving a lecture, you're speaking. So these all relate to logos and the, the, this power of the word and this magic, this magical ability that we have to influence others and thereby affect and transform the world around us. The, the logos is also a lek or leg in the Proto-Indo-European and allegedly where it comes from is also the root of um, when you look into ratio so that's like ratio one thing in relation to another. So that brings you to balance and equilibrium related to Mahat and calculation and reason and logic. It's also the direct um, origin, the root for, for logic. So all these things relate to thinking and our ability to engage in discourse and communicate with others and influence others. So it's uh, speech and language is, is very powerful. If you think of where we are now and what we would be without speech. I don't think we'd be very far without speech and the invention of, of language, especially because that allows speech to carry on the, the memory that's only instantiated in an instant and we can recollect things from the past. Um, by being able to write it down, we can amplify that power of language in order to carry messages forward in time, even long after we're dead. And, ideas and concepts can propagate forward to future generations to build upon and improve and further uh, amplify our uh, what we can create of our world rather than creating uh, darkness we can create with the light and the magic um, uh, related to magic also is the word abracadabra um, people might not know this but i wrote about it like 10 years ago or something that abracadabra means uh, you create as has been said, you create as you say. And that relates to a concept in also ancient Egypt called Ma'a Keru, which uh, Ma'a as in true, and Keru is you speak, so you speak the truth. So you abracadabra is like when the magician says abracadabra with his wand and the hat, and then abracadabra, and then the rabbit comes out of the hat. So he says, I'm going to make a rabbit come out of this hat, abracadabra, poof, and then the rabbit comes out of the hat because he's creating as he speaks. And that's, again, emphasizing this power, the, the true magic is that we create as we speak. And that's in alignment with the, the concept of the, the trivium methodology where you what you think and what you say, you follow through with your words. And, you know, in the movie Scarface, uh, I got two things in my life. I got my balls and my words, you know, as he says. And so that's the word. Your word is supposed to be where your honor comes from and your honesty. And that's where trust is built. Because if you break your word, then people won't trust you and they won't want to associate with you. So this helps engender a positive social dynamic between people is having that ma keru, that being true of voice. Being, speaking things that are true or doing your best to not willfully deceive. You can say things that are false unknowingly and that can happen to all of us. We can all be wrong. And um, it relates to, or relate one last thing, the magician and the sorcerer related to abracadabra because you create as you say, but a deceiver, what we can refer to as Mark Passio instantiated in the concept of a magician and sorcerer is that a magician will use the, the words to influence others in accordance with a, a higher will, a higher purpose, what is um, a truer will in alignment with what is true. And the sorcerer will just try to influence others for the goal of manipulation and deception so that they can gain at the expense of others. And so when you look at abracadabra, well, the magician is employing abracadabra, but the sorcerer is corrupting it because 
they're not creating as they say. They say one thing and do another. They're not in alignment. Their words are not in alignment with their actions. So I'll, I'll end it there, pass it to Derek. Yeah, Derek, you, you did bring up Abracadabra uh, last week too. I remembered that in the video, you did a good job, but I like that other, what was, say that again one more time, Chris, what, uh, where it comes from, the Akaruk, how do you say that? Yeah, Ma'akaru, so it's M-A-A. Ma'akaru. So that's the like, uh, Ma'at is truth, and then, or reality, or morality, and you have Ma, which is just true, or real, or moral. So Ma'a Keru and Keru is K-H-E-R-U, Ma'a Keru, and that's true of voice. So that's, it relates to abracadabra and all, all that stuff. Sweet, that's neat. And I think that points to one thing that I just want to uh, point out is you don't realize the time we're in, how important it is. But when you look back at the things that are influencing us now, whether it was Thomas Paine or uh, Lysander Spooner, these people in time wrote things down or said them aloud or recorded them. And now it's making a massive impact on our ability to speak and uh, share with others. So imagine what we're doing now is that important going forward for others. It's crucial. Okay, Derek, you're up, brother. Oh man, where to start? I'm just, yeah, so happy to be, hey, my friends, like, hey. Just listening to y'all is just, Great, and I didn't want to take up too much time or space because, you know, obviously with the one great work warriors, you know, a handful of us in the chat are already up in here, and it's <laughs> almost four in the morning over here. So after I spit my piece and hear Jerry, I think I'm gonna cut out, and I would like love for anyone else who would like to jump on because I know there's limited space, right, Chris? If they want to come on after after I depart uh, please i encourage folks to step up but uh yeah because we're all in correspondence right take it back to that good old natural law the second hermetic principle and leslie i really love what you had to say by the way and running down some of that and uh yeah like what are we doing here right now we're all in communication we're all corresponding with with each other so yeah, I think I touched upon this in the last video, but uh, just to reiterate, because it hasn't been said yet, so it wouldn't be redundant in this episode. <laughs> as far as just, like, yeah, like, as above, so below, as within, so without, you know. So what's in here? You know, how is, you know, our inner dialogue, how is the language that we speak to ourselves, first and foremost, you know, and so it's just, you know, from the micro to the macro, what is being rippled out from in here to out there? Because a lot of people are just projecting a lot of unconscious, you know, illiterate gibberish, if you will, you know, like those babies babbling in the land of Babylon, right, Chris? Like, <laughs> as I mentioned before, and yeah, Will, I really appreciate you checking that out and what you had to say, you know, like half an hour ago at this point. It's 3.33 in the morning. Holy shit. Good timing. Um, and yeah, I want to sincerely apologize. I didn't really bring a whole lot of rhymes that you were hoping for maybe. But <laughs> but what, uh, Chris? Um, we'll have a sublime time without those rhymes. Don't you worry one bit. <laughs> yeah, maybe next time I'll make up for it with a little bit of double time. But uh, No crime. Chris Nelson, what you had to say before was hecka cool, man. And can you re real quick uh what was the deal with heka again it's like well heka is just uh so you have a bunch of of gods and goddesses that are representations of as as i view it uh qualities and uh aspects of ourselves to externalize them in a concept so that we can reflect upon them reflect parts of ourselves outwards as gods goddesses and concepts in order to um, look at them as an externalized idea rather than just retain them inside and also able to communicate them to other people and through that symbolism gain a deeper understanding by corresponding things, bouncing things off each other and people can share that as a, like an archetype of or a mix of archetype or a mix of symbols that come together to represent, it could be many different things or dual aspects 
and uh, well, the, the gods and goddesses, there were only two that represented two foundational concepts, and that's Ma'at and Heka. They were both personified and anthropomorphized, externalized as, as gods. Heka was a god. And he had, uh, and he, he's related to, to Ma'at because he had the symbol of the Ka, which was uh, the upright arms. And that's Ka, and that's supposed to be an aspect of, uh, of like a spirit of ourselves and it's upright actions, um, the, the essence of what we do, our, our deeds. And so Heka had um, on, the, on his head, he had the Ka on his head. And that was the, the representation of as a statue figure for, for Heka. So it relates to, to Mad. But those were the two like foundational concepts in, in uh, Egyptian lore was before the world existed, there was just, uh, you know, uh, darkness, there was chaos. And to create the world, there needed to be something to put the world on. So that was in one of the, the mythopoetic narratives was, well, Ma'at is the plinth. So Ma'at came first as a counter to chaos because she is order. And then the world was placed on the plinth, the mound, which is Ma'at. So she's the foundation for everything. That's how the foundation of how we're supposed to create in our lives as well is to build our actions upon the foundation of Ma'at. And Heka was the other concept. The, so these two foundational concepts before the world was created, before existence, was Ma'at and Heka. And they're the only two gods or goddesses that are represented by those foundational concepts. Damn. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, a proper foundation in those proper codes of consciousness are quite important. And yeah, to establish you know, the, the proper grammar to express that and all that. Yeah. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah. Sorry, I got caught up in that California slang. I'm out here in France. You, you, they don't speak that lingo over here. So when I hear something, you know what I mean? So, and that kind of sucks because, you know, there's so many, you know, like Ebonics in other different forms of saying certain things and people have their accents which can be misinterpreted from other people who aren't who don't have like that just like more open-mindedness and like worldly mindedness if you will of just okay like you traveled around you understand like people speak there's language barriers even within the english language just depending on how people pronounce the words and all that stuff and their accent behind it and people might misinterpret an accent as if it's someone has an attitude about something when no, they're just like, that's how they speak kind of thing, you know, like, <laughs> but anyways, it brings me to the last point I want to bring up and I want to pass it off to Sarah is that, yeah, uh, language has been used against us, against us. And I'm not going to reiterate a lot of stuff that I said in previous videos and all, all that, but you know, with the language being part of the, the battlefield of the divide and conquer and, you know, yada, yada, that all these tactics, you know, are used against us. Um, it's really important for us to understand, like, you know, how words have been weaponized and all these things. And, you know, there's like parasitic phrases and, you know, all the Orwellian doublespeak of, of you know, the inversions of meanings, which is why, you know, we try to emphasize etymology a good amount and yeah so yeah with weaponized words i mean the real basic one is just you know like a conspiracy theorist right people don't understand what a, a conspiracy is you know of just like conspirare of you know like uh breathing t together on whatever the endeavor type of thing and to yeah l'esprit mon ami uh, Fred, you know, what's up with that shit? And, uh, like, all these things just, you know, breath, spirit, all, you know, it all ties in together. So, it's just a shame that we were, we were not taught this in school. Uh, of course, not the trivium. In even some teachings of the trivium, they have things out of order or whatever. But, uh, yeah, like, the, the parasitic phrases that we just, like, are programmed and conditioned when we grow up and, like, just with the social media and the poop culture, <laughs> right, as Mari West likes to say, of just, like, you know, what the fuck is all this programming, right? And, you know, how are 
are we seeing people, you know, interact with each other and, you know, what are they talking about? And like their train of thought uh, transcribed, you know, through their vocal cords and what's coming out of that based, based off of, you know, what they saw on TV the night before and this and that. And you could just see certain patterns and certain, you know, like even cadences of speech. Even in movies, you see like, you know, movies and the writing, it's all like based off of, you know, what the fuck's going on in Los Angeles and all that shit, right? But, uh, yeah, it's, it's important for us to understand like our thoughts, our train of thought, our, our, our articulation of our thoughts and the words that we construct in our mind before we... I mean, just having that proper inner dialogue helps out so much. Like having that good relationship with yourself and that self-talk. If you know, a lot of coaches, coaches say. But um, yeah, uh, breaking out of these parasitic things helps out a tremendous amount, and it kind of breaks the cycle of kind of like these knee-jerk reaction things. Because you know, sometimes you, you say you blurt something out, and then like in the heat of the moment and then it, it just you know perpetuates into just a negative feedback loop type of thing so i just wanted to throw that out there for folks to take heed because you know this type of shit the bickering and whatever the fuck is on all fucking levels unfortunately you know infighting on whatever kind of network uh, type of thing sometimes so we need to be wise with our words my friends and uh i really appreciate everyone's presence here and uh yeah, Sarah Cross, congratulations on your new show coming up on Revolution Radio. Going to be chilling with Crib Rick a little bit more, huh? That's awesome. Yeah, thanks, Derek. Can we hear you, Sarah? Say something. Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah. you're coming in. Cool. Let's hear from you. You got something you'd like to share about the words and what everybody said? Thanks so much, Derek, by the way. Yeah, thanks for um, inviting me. And I don't know a lot about what I could add because I would say would have said everything that all of you would have said. But I do really appreciate like like Chris, what you were talking about just makes me want to go and do more research on like ancient gods and stuff. You know, which is like a middle school hobby of mine because <laughs> it's just interesting you know even if you don't really use it you do anything with the information it's still it, it's kind of where a lot of what we are as culture is now come from is our history and what we've taken from it what we absorbed from it but um especially with the what um leslie pulled out from the verse the bible verse um and that's actually like a really good one and it's one of those things that you can look at and use it as an example you know because like you're saying words are being used as a weapon and it's very easy to do that when people don't understand how to speak properly <laughs> or understand what they're saying when they're speaking, you know, they just blurt stuff out, you know, out of context without thinking. Um, so even using the power, or I wouldn't even call it a power, I'd call it a, a skill set to practice of thought, emotion and action with just your regular daily lives and using it as like a normal thing, whether you're speaking or not builds up the skill of being able to, you know, think and speak properly and use it properly. So, like yeah, a I mean, entrepreneur. <laughs> huh? like your own thought entrepreneur, you know, we think of entrepreneur as only being, you know, in the field of finances, but you have to entrepreneur the way you think, you know, and they don't teach you that in school. Sorry to interrupt you, you just, but that you inspired no, me. <laughs> that's okay. Um, it's just, you know, channeling the inner detective discernment within yourself, you know, and um, really thinking things through before you, you really put something out there because, you know, even once you've said something, you've said it, you know, 
And once you've written something, you know, you've written it. I mean, you could take it back, but once action takes place, you know, there's really just history written. You can't really take an action back. So you want to be really thoughtful or really particular and just clear about your thoughts and emotions. And too many, too many people are out there going emotion, action instead of thought emotion and action they're they're missing the one of the most the first most important that's the i am that's the mind um that's where it starts so i mean everything else i i would have said or i would have agreed with and um the only other thing i would add if you guys want me to later on i was looking at some history, some ancient history of origins of language and the written and spoken word. So, but I can leave it there for now. Fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, we can circle back to that. Um, Jerry, did you have any uh, comments off of what you've just heard you wanted to pop in on? Uh, too many, but I'm practicing being brief. Uh, Real quick, so, uh, Jerry. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, if James wants to pop on and there's no room, I'll, I'll you know allow that to happen for sure. I think there's still a spot. Um, oh, is there? I don't know. Let's ask him if he, if James, if you're out there, let us know if you're able to get in or not. All right, but Jerry, continue. Sorry to you know ruin the flow on that. No worries, brother man. Shit, three a.m. in there. Crazy man doing the great work. So. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Sarah, how long will it take you to break that down? Because you got me curious now. Um, I have. I've got like two and a half pages. That's all shorthand, but. And some of you may have already know of this information as well, so. All right, we'll circle back to you, I guess. Um, yeah, everybody made great points. I think action is what really uh, rung out to me. That's something I'm working on. It's uh, just taking the action, not being hesitant, and uh, definitely aligning the thoughts, emotions, and action, right? But I actually wrote some things down earlier today as I was watching a, a sales video on YouTube, and it had to do with uh, words. So I'll share that. Um, basically, it had to do with our belief system. So people believe, for example, I'm not good at blank. And I think what we have to do is turn that around, that phrase, and say, I am not good at blank yet. And then like start working on the change. The phrase is your mindset because it starts in the mindset hey james <laughs> so that's just one point i wanted to make um destroy the belief systems that are dangerous and um so i guess you have to pay attention to your thoughts and um i guess working hard on working smart working smart because if someone is really good at words you can also be good at words you just have to practice so that's something i wanted to share i think that like was related to this conversation so yeah super brief what's up james i'll pass you the baton the speaking stick hey on that note jerry is a perfect example you can go back to our one great work warriors meetings and presentations that we've been putting out for more than a year and you look at his first times and you can tell jerry was really struggling with getting in front of that camera and speaking clearly and everything because it wasn't very new to him but he forced through he pushed through and got better and better and now like he's doing an excellent job being concise and coming up with good things to say and um having bullet points and so um he's a testament to how possible that is in a very short time thanks jerry for your um like willingness and encouragement uh to keep doing the work you're doing and getting so much better at it i really appreciate um what you've done i'm super proud of it 
Thank you, brother. James, thanks for joining us. I'd like to hear a little from you. And then um, I have one uh, post I want to share from YouTube and kind of get people's thoughts on it. And then um, after that, we'll come back to you, Sarah, if you want to share us a little bit about the history. Uh, James, you're up. Hey, you guys. Am I coming through okay? Yeah. Yeah, you are. Coming loud and clear. What's up, James? Uh, I missed probably 30 minutes of what was going on, and then I remembered the stream was happening, so I decided to crash the party. Um, so excuse me if I'm repeating anybody, but... Uh, so the topic is power of words. Uh, I just wanted, I wrote down a little blurb here. Speech is the most powerful tool, okay? Uh, words and written language carry a vibrational energy that has the power to change hearts and minds. Uh, all good ideas are communicated through words, both spoken and written. All bad ideas are communicated similarly. Uh, the, the battlefield of the mind Okay. The mind that believes in authority, the mind that believes in the perpetuation of slavery is a battlefield where language is the ammunition. Um, this train of thought led me to think about the first iteration, the first language to ever create a word that meant freedom. It was a Sumerian text. That, and it's, I believe it's pronounced Amagi or Amagi. It's A M A G I. They created this word freedom because they needed to find a way to describe the thing that was stolen from them when they were enslaved. Before this word was invented, this is just how the world, their society was. They didn't need the word because that's just how it was. So when we talk about the power of words, man, what a, what a powerful tool, weapon to be able to create something to describe the thing that was stolen from you, you know? And um, it just kind of makes me really, uh, really upset when we when when i start thinking about the way that especially on online forums and different platforms and whatever the way that speech is being suppressed and censored because this is the most peaceful way for us to remain in a in a condition of any sort of condition of freedom even if it's a very very small amount of it that we have um we're not totally in total uh, enslavement, enslavement yet, and hopefully that day never comes. But if we're not allowed to speak and communicate good ideas, then it will happen. And as far as anybody out there, and you know me, I'm always a little combative, but as far as anybody out there that thinks that people like us, all we do is talk, well, yeah, that's good enough, isn't it? Because this is how we reach people. This is how we make sure that the ideas of freedom and liberty, they don't die on, on some real bloody battlefield. And through, and like I've already stated through these, the communication of all these great ideas, we really do a, a, a fantastic job at preserving what little freedom we have and possibly even helping it grow and expand for future generations. Maybe we get to enjoy a little bit more of it in our lifetimes, but preservation of freedom for future generations is an extremely th important thing to keep in mind. You know, when I think about the Kaibalion, one of the, uh, the opening phrase of the Kaibalion is, uh, man, it was just on the tip of my tongue, but it's something along the lines of, Oh, don't let the, don't let the flame die out. Uh, something along those lines. I'm trying to remember exactly what it says, but I'll paraphrase instead. And what that means is that this, that work, the Kaibalion or any other work was written down as a way to preserve that knowledge. So that way the future could have access to it. Every single invention that has ever been created was first an idea and then those ideas had to be communicated out 
into the world via speech, uh, illustration, written word, and then actually created and manifested into reality through the use of different tools and materials. So not only is the word word, words important, but communication also, have, I, I, I guess, is a huge implication with the even the term words, right? But maybe I'm uh, being a little long-winded here. But I just wanted to come in and say something along those lines and tell you all that I've been thinking about you all a lot lately. And I'm glad that a lot of important people, a lot of people that I consider important are here in the same room tonight. And I'm glad to see all of you. So. Well, I'm glad you joined us, James. And um, there's a lot to um, what we're trying to do because there's a million ways to get lost and confused. And we can see uh, this web of confusion on the net in everything we do. And there's constantly all these words being splattered all over the screen. And some of them bring up emotions and people take things the wrong way and all this type of thing. And with all the difficult tea we have communicating with people, this is a very important topic. So um, one thing I wanted to share is there was uh, when we posted the One Great Work Warriors um, episode last week, there was someone who came on the um, couple people commented that I thought were interesting comments. And one in particular, I wanted to uh, put out there because I thought it might stimulate um, some of your guys' thoughts. And so I'm curious what anyone thinks about this. This was Nemo Jones. Uh, he said he was going to try to be here tonight, probably wasn't able to make it. I think it's a heat. Um, and it says here, I'll put it in the thing. What are the best examples of words that have changed meaning over time? I'm very curious about this as it seems so perilously close to relativism and even nihilism. Is there meaning or only meaninglessness? And in context, someone else had posted before that on that same channel about how words, it said, thing is, there's no correct definition as word meanings can change a lot over time, a uh, short or a long time, uh, semantic drift, they called it, which I thought was kind of a good little pun. So um, I thought that might stimulate um, some of your thoughts. And let's try to go through, um, I'd like to hear everybody say something one more time if possible. Um, but let's try to keep it a little shorter. We'd like to go another 30, 40 minutes or so. And um, I really like to hear from everyone. So uh, I think, Will, you'd be up next. But we don't have to go in that particular order. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, everyone had fantastic points. It's it's amazing. You get all these minds together and we're exchanging words. This, like you said, James, this is the battlefield. This is what we're doing. Words program can program the mind. They do program the mind for sure. It all depends on what direction it's going to go. This is also why context matters and understanding the etymology, the root of the word and that language. You know, the English language doesn't have a feminine and masculine counterparts, unlike Spanish, French, uh, and, and many other, the majority of languages, right? So there's English is kind of this bastardized version this conglomeration of all these different um, languages, uh, origins. So keeping it to the, the origin of the word where it's true definition, it's true meaning gives profound clarity. So I, I absolutely words do have meaning and it's important to understand what the word means. Um, I mean, this is, this is the whole the whole pyramid of slavery, it starts with the words, corporate sorcery, word magic, all of this kind of stuff. It's simple words as rights. What is a right or human? Or here's one, a word that it's had that has changed freedom or anarchy. That's probably, you know, one of the biggest ones in our realm that we talk about anarchy. Most people would say chaos. And we obviously know that it means no, no rulers, no masters, no slaves. Um, and another word I would say that has changed all over the place throughout the years is God. Now, some words, the, the origin, the, the exact origin of a word can be in up for question. 
God is one of those, but there's a a large amount of evidence showing that it's proto uh, Indo European, and the word God, G U T from the proto Indo Indo, -Indo European, uh, means to invoke. So even that word, it's very similar to Hebrew, you know, the the tetragrammaton or something like Derek would say the tetra the tetragrammaton. So. It's good to know these origins and these definitions. And James, you said it's ammo. That's exactly what it is. This is true education, understanding the vibration, because that's what it really is. And this is how it influences reality and influences other individuals through that vibration. And you know, the voice, my last point, it's a bridge of the metaphysic, the metaphysical and the physical, because you're using thoughts and you're mixing it with emotions, and then you are speaking it as an action. So you have all three in that combination. It's it's a burst of magic. Absolutely. That's what words are. And uh, there's a huge dash of intent in there as well. Intention is an important, an important yeah. ingredient. Well, the intention is the thought. Sure. For sure. Yep. That's the thought. That's your intent. And then energy and motion that's energy mentation and um and then the, the physical component of of speaking it out so mm -hmm. um yeah i'll pass it on uh pass it on to brandon <laughs> the word conspiracy too right <laughs> oh absolutely um i do see it as a kind of relativistic um aspect because if we have been you know slaves pretty much since since the dawn of mankind then they have controlled language since the dawn of mankind and therefore as they like to build things up or create things build them up and then destroy it in their sick psychopathic mindset then that comes with change you know because that's what they do is they you know you know how they build societies and then they build them up and then and then they change them by way of you know how destruction that's just a sick game that they play and i see it as a means of relativistic because um it it keeps us in a state or, or it creates more confusion you know when you start to change these definitions of words or you know um because that's what we are seeing today is you know we've had certain words that had a meaning and definitions and then therefore as decades pass on and then once that next you know generation comes they start to change these definitions change these meanings then therefore is that really creating more clarity or is that creating more of a distortion and that's really what i see it is is creating more of a distortion trying to deliberately create confusion and we know that you know confusion is one of the negative um is on that negative chart on the natural law you know health expressions and uh one thing that i wanted to uh, talk about and i'll be brief is when i first heard michael tessarion talk about we need to be simple you know illiterate um i thought he was just talking about you know like logos and symbols you know first but as I progress in my own thinking and consciousness, now I'm starting to see it's not just, you know, like the logos and symbols, but we need to be simple illiterate in the words too, because if the words are symbols, which they are, you know, because the letters are, are you know, our symbols and we just conform them. Uh, so they're pretty much just sigils. Then we need to understand those. And what does it mean to be literate? It means to be educated. Well, what does a symbol mean? It means to cast something out, to throw something you know held together. So the things that we cast out with our vibratory you know energy, with our, our voice, with our words, with our communication, our speech, you know our language has a means to communicate. We need to be educated in what we say. Therefore, we can bring about the best you know results. And then therefore, we're not creating unconsciously because when we are symbol you know illiterate, then we are creating consciously. So. I passed on to Leslie. All right. Gosh, that's such great points that they're all integrating together in my mind. So the warriors talked about, and specifically Brandon today, about how words create definition and boundaries. The use of the word no is a boundary. It's a very powerful word that and words create boundaries that then can help create definition and separation. 
right? So they define our life experiences. So that is one pole of the, the way that words separate, where it can be good, where it can be powerful and important. But that separation can also have a downside. So words can separate people. Words can separate us inside ourself. So those so they can take us or things out of the awareness or the context of our interconnectedness as well, our interdependence. So for example, a tree doesn't exist without the sun or the soil or the water. The richness of all the elements determines the robustness of a tree. A, a tree doesn't exist by itself, right? And it's the same with people. So we have this polarity and that can be manipulated and used against us. So when we talk about mind control and the idea of division and division being um, used through words to divide us within and between us, among us, it's that dark sorcery. And so with like satanic ritual abuse or trauma-based mind control, there's a, a manipulation of words through the understanding of psychology in dividing people's consciousness, right? And planting seeds of through words to a part, to a fragment of a person. And it's through words or other kinds of um, signals that then open up that consciousness to create um, behaviors, right? Often that are not coming from a person's true will, but that have been programmed and fed through the use of words and the division of our internal um, mind. So this idea of integration and understanding oneness while also understanding the individual, right? And the, the value of every sound, every word, right? And being aware of it. R Rick brought a point last time about, you know, he said, kind of pointed out this irony, you know, we are saying you can't really change the definition of words, but that's what people are doing. That's what people are trying to do. And that is the delusion. That is the sorcery. That is what creates the distortion and the confusion that Brandon's talking about that then creates further division. So there's um, there's danger, right, in, in our lack of awareness, our lack of consciousness, and our lack of integration um, within e ourselves and among each other or between each other. So I'll, I'll stop there. Go ahead, Fred. When it comes to exposing the, the walls of the prison and all the collaterals and all the things that have spawned from the underbelly of ignorance, what we have to do is rebuild and using language as a healing tool and have it and in the in the context of shadow working or introspection we have to relearn how to communicate with ourselves and and taking boundaries and respecting and when we have and it's all coming back to the the principle of correspondence so if we want to better the communication and, and, and fortify the, the, the network between people, because it is a network, it's just because it's energy, then we have to treat ourselves well. We have this inner conversation that people have. Yes, we have uh, 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 psychic noises and 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 ego-driven thoughts that are, are trying to break us and, and make us stop or, or, or abandon what we're doing. What we have to fight against this voice, this inner voice that we have inside of us, I know most people have it. You know, we still have it. I'm, I'm even after years of shadow working and the, changing my dialogue with myself and, and working to the, the grammar and the vocabulary, 
you know, we still have to struggle because we're, we, we never suffered enough. It's incredible what, how much wasted energy is happening on, even on social media, even with the people you're working with. There's, there's a, there's a flow of, of uh, there's, this is a stagnation of, of even here in Quebec, particularly, I'm going to take it as an example. They are always oversimplifying the language. This is what, this is the reform that they're doing. They're taking the powers from people. It's, it's the ability to communicate, you know, and, and, and being right and being truthful and 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 not wasting words not wasting energy into uh, uh egoic uh, uh endeavors we have to this is only a matter of care this is what we have to learn how to care for our language care for our brothers and sisters and the only thing that we can do now is being careful for uh, for what we wish for. We do we want to build on on shaky foundations, or we want to build back on better grounds? Chris, well said, Go on, brother. Thanks much. Fred, I was just um, showing this uh, good post we just got um, from our friend at Co-Create Vitality, Kavalia, and um, she was talking about the yoga mantras and chanting that help reprogram the word spells. Um, something you said, Fred, that really struck me is um, the preciousness of our time and energy. And you were, you're saying, like, don't waste it, you know, like there's people that will just jump on a chat or thing and just spew out some weird negative comments like why are you wasting your energy and my time and my energy if you don't have something productive or constructive to say why you know don't waste so it's a mirror point. into Thanks their for... internal chaos self. right yes In internal chaos and confusion on what they're doing with their time they have no idea yeah yeah um and be impeccable with your word thank you leslie the four agreements that's a beautiful uh, quote to bring up um, anybody else want to pop in on that topic that we've been discussing, you know, like uh, how the words have changed and. Um... Yeah, I had that written down real quick. I mean, USA all the way. <laughs> but by the way, I'm not a big fan of the word soccer, even though I understand <laughs> some of the meaning behind it. And they were kind of skittish about the British and all these things. And. It's like, you know, like we broke away from your, we're trying to get away from the crown. We're trying to hold it down over in this new town or nation, if you will, right? And uh, yeah, I understand some of the historicity behind that and some of the motivations to change some of the wordings within the English language. We're talking about English. We're all speaking this language, right? Uh, but yeah, that's just like a silly example, of just like sports, right? They, you know invited some and, and invented some new, you know, bread and circus for, you know, people to be entertained by up until this day. And now there's like fucking, I don't know, like all sorts of weird shit. But anyways, so sometimes, yeah, like we might have been there before of just, okay, so words change over time. Okay, yeah, we can look into the etymology and, you know, at team uh, online whatever.com or and look up whatever word and you can see the progress of you know from the origin to present day and you know how the real definition got lost along the way does that mean that you know what we're saying right now is you know false well it really depends on certain things and like how Seriously, are we, are we really going to be taking speech, you know, just life in general? Like, what the fuck? You know, people want to invent whatever the fuck and identify with whoever the hell in or like 
invent whatever fucking pronouns these days. This is out of fucking control. It's fucking bullshit. And I'm fucking so... I'm not tired of it. I'm not sick of it because I don't manifest those types of words in the, you know, you know calling myself right now. No, I'm not. I'm fucking fed up. You know, like my patience is lost with, you know, the utter ridiculousness. And like, if people do not understand how bad shit is right fucking now, wait till AI augments this shit, you know, tenfold in maybe not even a fucking year. So please, people like step your fucking life game up, yo, straight the fuck up. And it starts from right fucking here. The first eye to recognize and realize, you know, like people be living real lies that they tell themselves on a daily fucking basis, you know, fuck. And, you know, based off of, you know, whatever language or lack of that we were, you know, brought up and educated into, whatever, right? So that's my little ranchish thing, keeping me awake at, at this time of the hour. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. I skipped you, I'm sorry. I had to let that off my chest, but yeah. You know, you said that. something, Derek, that reminded me of something Chris was saying with the words, you know, you can imagine way back people first just pointing at things going, ugh, ugh, right? And then, of course, there was, you know, a period of time where ugh became ugger, and then ugger became the tree hugger or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, it obviously has to change over time, you know, like, but that doesn't mean we don't understand where we're at in that process. And that's the part of it where the more you take a little time and pay attention, you learn the differences, just like any skill or trade, you learn to look closer and learn the differences between one thing or another, where you stand back as a beginner, it's just a bunch of the same, you know, and that's true of anything. But uh, yeah, Chris, did you want to jump in next? One uh, example that I always remember on um, <clears throat> what can be regarded as the etymology fallacy, that's just because something was originally described and etymology doesn't mean that that's the actual like uh we could say you know etymology is uh, the true meaning of words that's what the word etymology means but sometimes it fails and just one example to keep that in mind to not always be like die hard over it is uh, go look up the word oxygen and if you go look i don't remember what it means but it has nothing to do with like the the molecule or the air has something completely unrelated. So that's just one example of, you know, the, the changing meaning of words. Yeah, sometimes like freedom, anarchy, they change. It's to limit our understanding. And that's the bad thing because, um, you know, the limitation, if you limit the definition of words, then you're limiting people's ability to understand the world. And uh, Philip K. Dick um, has a quote, uh, the basic tool for the manipulation of reality is the manipulation of words. If you can control the meaning of words, you can control the people who must use the words. And that's what it relates to what Fred was saying, because um, if they're trying to simplify things, um, that's what 1984 was about. That was a big theme in 1984 with the Newspeak. Mm -hmm. And another qu quote by uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein is, the limits of my language means the limits of my world. So if you can't define things and if you can't speak about them, if you can't reference them with a word to communicate about them, then you're not really going to be communicating about them. And if you're not aware of certain things because you don't have the words to use them, you're not aware of certain concepts, then that whole aspect of reality will be shut off to you. And it's all thanks to language and words that we're able to gain insight and knowledge of these things. And, uh, you know, one thing Brad, uh, F Fred brought up is the simplicity. So we often think of simplification, keep things simple, you know, kiss keeps things, keep it simple, stupid, or keep it simple, silly. But uh, you think of making things simple as, as being better because it's simple is less confusion. And in a sense, yes, but there's a dual aspect because you keep it simple. It's easier to understand at the moment, but it's not going to bring you that greater clarity. See, we think of simple as opposing confusion, but we also see confusion uh, opposed by clarity. But when you keep things simple, you're not bringing in that greater clarity. So initially, a simplification is a good way to introduce something 
to, like say, whet the appetite, to tantalize the intellect and maybe have it pursue uh, greater depths of understanding of something. But you always need greater depth, greater detail, because the detail is where you get that greater clarity. So there's this play between uh, simplicity and avoiding confusion, but then it also keeps you confused because if you don't go into greater detail, which takes you away from simplicity, you're not going to get that greater detail and that more profound understanding because that greater detail is that the more definite, the more detail you have, the more you're able to see. And that brings that high definition, that HD view and that clarity of what we're going to look at. And uh, I have a uh, like two paragraphs, well, it's, it's a big paragraph, but from 1984, I'll just read the, the second one. So it's this guy talking with Winston from 1984, and he says, don't you see that the whole aim of Newspeak is to narrow the range of thought? In the end, we shall make thought crime literally impossible because there will be no words in which to express it. Every concept that can ever be needed will be ex expressed by exactly one word with its meaning rigidly defined and all its subsidiary meanings rubbed out and forgotten. So this is what the goal of Newspeak was, was to narrow the range of thought. And again, if you can't think of certain things like what we have in the censorship of our current era and has existed for thousands of years, the, the, those in power want to censor and control what people can even think about and even discuss. Well, that shuts off rather than have an expansive awareness of the world while you're being shut off and you're being constricted in your ability to understand and formulate and conceptualize and discuss things and gain a greater alignment of your own inner reality with the outer reality as it actually is so you end up living more in a in a fabricated false illusory world and unreality i'll pass it to sarah excellent you, have you guys ever got um something from ikea if you get a piece of furniture from Ikea, it comes with these amazing instructions that don't have a single word in them because they make them, I think it's Swiss or something. They make them so you can understand them in every language. And the way they draw those pictures is so succinct. And it shows just enough detail without too much that you can understand which piece they're talking about. And I think what you said, Chris, there was just reminding me of that in how we speak and how we use words, if we can describe the way Ikea does in pictures uh, succinctly, efficiently, but give enough information and detail so people know exactly what you're talking about, that is the goal. But I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, sir. Um, well, I was just going to, I agree with everything everyone said, but I, I wanted to try and answer the question that the guy had um, build the part, I mean, the examples of words, Will and Chris gave some good examples of that, but you could just list and list and list the words of words that have changed their meaning. And really, it, it, it's not something I don't think people should focus on too much unless they are going into history and really looking at the history and the evolution of these things, because the parasite class controls all the publishing companies so they can put in whatever definition they want so it's almost irrelevant you know when you're looking up definitions or whatever you have to kind of go through history and i think it would be important too for people to consider to trust more of their instincts and understand like when you're communicating with people it's sometimes it's more than just words you there's context behind it so sometimes context is what people need to focus on or really pull in as well when they're listening to people speak. And context matters. You know, it's, you know, you could say a whole, whole sentence, you know, like you could tell somebody, I love you and not ever speak a word of it. And it's, it's how you communicate that and how we do that. So that that's part of the, one of the traits that human beings have like our natural inborn traits that we all have this ability to want to be able to express communication in some way or communicate some way so 
I, I just wanted to add in to everything that people should maybe consider that when you're looking at language, it's not just the words that we speak that we should be looking at. We should be looking at how we communicate silently, how we communicate through art, because art, I say this all the time, art is its own language. I mean, it's part of, I mean, we wouldn't have language unless if art didn't exist like you know art technically came first it was maybe the first form of communication because i mean that we know in our history that we know of who knows there might be a whole bunch more just like stored away hidden in that underground vatican library you know so <laughs> There's all kinds of things that we can still discover about this kind of stuff. But I just wanted to add that in that, you know, and maybe, you know, to the person who asked the question, maybe they should discourage or if they do this already, discourage the use of things like abbreviating sentences, you know, because you don't want to spell out the whole word, word or when you're typing something on the Internet or writing an email or whatever it is you're doing, or maybe don't, you know, put out a whole text message in like emojis, because that's the kind of thing that Chris was talking about with like the 1984 concept of dumbing down the thought process so that we have no real, we don't have any practice skill set in actually communicating. You know, you got like, people trying to tell me something and like a whole text of emojis and I'm like I don't know what that means because I I know how to read books so I I don't know how to read that you know um so it's um I just want wanted to add that in and I'll leave that there you thanks know. Sarah it is art too you know learning to speak eloquently becomes an art form you know, you watch someone who's a really good speaker on like a TED talk or something. You're like, damn, you know, I'm inspired, you know. So um, it is an art form. Uh, go ahead, Will. I was just going to interject because Sarah sparked something cursive. You know, they don't teach cursive in public school anymore. Um, my daughter knows cursive. I try to practice that with her all the time. AI has a hard time translating the cursive how it's written. And this used to be kind of, especially in America, it was a uniformed style of writing. Um, and that's something that's been completely, you know, eradicated from, you know, modern, quote unquote, modern education. And um, real quick, we had actually talked about that uh, kind of a few days before we had recorded, you know, that, you know, words and language isn't just so, you know, pretty logical, you know, like there is a nonverbal, you know, aspect to it. But um, we wanted to kind of you know, figure out like who, like who is this video going to be for? And, you know, of course we wanted to kind of keep it more basic and clear because, because Chris had brought up some good, you know, kind of examples and Derek wanted to talk about, you know, like green language and stuff like that. But yeah, there is that kind of um, more like deeper aspect when it comes to language and words that people should, you know, help explore. And there is a, a like a nonverbal communication too, you know, because when we are talking about, you know, communication, you don't necessarily need words because you communicate, you know, like just with your expressions, you know, just with your body, you know, so, but yeah, how we had thought about that. Right on. Well, we got a few more minutes. Uh, Jerry, James, anyone who hasn't spoken up again on this round, uh, feel free to jump in. Go ahead, Jerry. Save the best for last. Anyways, I don't know. I was just thinking like about telepathy, like how words are vibration and like you can communicate with people telepathically without even saying a thing. And that might be, you know, the future. People like don't even speak. They just, you know, get their whatever they want to cross just telepathically. But... I don't know. <laughs> Derek is falling asleep there. Anyways, yeah, I think you guys made great points. Uh, one thing I'm very curious of, because I looked up words that change over time, was the meat. So let's see. Uh, 
meat was used to describe any kind of solid food. Now it specifically refers to the flesh of animals. So, I mean, I, I looked up like a video on like words that changed meaning over time and like it made sense, whoever was, you know, uh, teaching it. I can't recall anything, but that's an example. But yeah, I think going back to the origins is super important. And then something I didn't mention during the uh, roundtable discussion, you know how we say words are magic or spells, like they're also curses, right? So we have to be careful about the words that we choose. And uh, I don't know. What else did I want to say? Like, I guess, you know how you, you say that the word was God, but then someone said God is eternal. So he's like omnipresent. So I just wanted to say that. And uh, I don't even know what else to say. But, you know, have the courage to, to speak. And I'll pass it to James. Chris Nelson, did you say the Philip K. Dick quote? Yeah. All right. Uh, there's a lot going on. So sorry. I didn't, um, so anyways, the, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary is owned by Encyclopedia Britannica, okay, which is owned by the Safra Banking family. And up until 2019, a woman named Leslie Gelb was the um, uh, – was on the – was on the editorial board of advisors. Uh, Leslie Gelb was the president emeritus of the Council on Foreign Relations. And so now you can kind of understand the weaponization of language through the dictionary a little bit better. Uh, these are the people who decide, it's the bankers and the CFR members that own and control the way that uh, words are defined in those big thick books that uh, people don't own anymore anyways. So, um, but Hey, you know, freedom of speech, who can be against that? Uh, teenagers come up with slang words all the time. So their parents can't figure out what they're talking about. Way to go rebels. You're really doing a good job there. Um, as far as the hieroglyphics that people call emojis, uh, whatever, you know, freedom of speech for the win. It's not until the mob comes crawling out and starts using words to manipulate and deceive people uh, that it becomes an issue. And when they decide that they can change definitions at a whim, it does create a, it does create an atmosphere of anxiety and, and stress, which can kind of, you know, break down kind of a uh, civil cohesion that might've once existed where we were able to speak and know what words, uh, what we meant by saying certain words, we use language to identify things. That's exactly why language was ever invented in the first place. We needed a way to point at something and say, this is what that is. That's an apple. And we all agree that we're going to, you know, that's an apple. The very use of language itself, the vibration of language is used like we, we have this gift, like the, the vibrations of the syllables, the letters, the words, how all the letters make up the words, they all fit together a certain way. It's, it's a, it's divine description, the way that the vibration holds the word together and carries that energy from my mouth to your ears. And you're able to process that and translate it and know what I'm saying. If we're fooling around with definitions, then there's no way for us to have anything more than a superficial relationship with reality itself. And that's dangerous. As far as any specific words, the first one that came to mind was vaccine. That one was changed very recently and it took the world and it went ass over tea kettle on itself. And that's, I mean, just as an example, I think that Derek might have mentioned something about uh, the different sexes and how they're playing around with that. And yeah, I agree. That's ridiculous. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, our, like one of our um, commenters brought that up too. you know, people 
losing the definition of the basic gender, like yeah. defying reality itself. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, when it comes there's down no to up, it, there's no down. <laughs> freedom of speech is, I mean, we, but we can't abuse it. It's an important thing to be able to hold on to, but that doesn't mean just because you're able to speak whatever, uh, which way you you would uh, be able to, if you if your mouth can make the words, go ahead and say them. There might be negative consequences for some of the words that are coming out of your mouth, you know. But hey, if you have the bravery to say the words, then you should be able to take it, you know, like a grown up when the consequences come your way. So, um, but it's not freedom of speech. So just to reiterate, the gist is it's not freedom of speech to deceive people by altering definitions of the words that we use to identify reality itself. That's dangerous. That's a no, no. And that's how freedom is decreased <laughs> and slavery is increased as a result. So we need to get back on the same page as far as language is concerned. There's many different languages. Most of them are beautiful. Some of them are a little rough around the edges. <laughs> but again, freedom of speech. Woohoo. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I was trying to look up, you know, there's a famous story, James, of some king in history who had a lisp. And then supposedly that affected the whole language going forward. Uh, it looks like there's some disagreement about who that really was or how true that was. It doesn't matter, though, because we can just see that happening. You know, someone with yeah. enough power and clout uses a certain set of words and everybody else starts repeating it, you know, and it kind of brings me back to the Smurfs. You remember how the Smurfs used to call everything Smurfy? And pretty pretty soon, like, Smurf is like 80% of their whole language. Let's go Smurf <laughs> over there and Smurf some up Smurf. You know, it's like pretty soon, you know, your whole language has become super limiting and mm -hmm. there's no way to uniquely describe things and differentiate things. And there's a lot of confusion possible. And I think that really uh, highlights what almost everybody said here in different ways that we got to um, basically put our mind and our hearts into this process of how we speak and which words we use and are they in context. And then there's the practice and skill of getting better at that. And so we're trying to encourage everyone out there because this is you know, the thing that will or will not make the difference in the future of human freedom and human slavery is whether you and I and those around us choose to put the time and energy that it takes to speak clearly and communicate carefully so that other people can understand these things and we can work out the differences. And I would say the last thing, last important point I would say is, um, you know, there's a tendency out there to think like people think you have to know. And there's only very few things we really have to know. Um, we can have a lot of things in our head that we don't actually know. We just keep it there. We consider it. We say, well, that makes sense to an extent, but I don't know beyond that. Let it be. You know, your mind can hold on to many, many things. And in ancient history, we have stories of people that could recite a whole book out of memory. And we've lost some of those abilities. Is that due to all the shit they're spraying in the sky? Is that due to the breaking down of our language? Is that due to the chemicals in our food? I don't know, but we need to work on restructuring and rebuilding our ability to have minds that contain a lot of uh, things that keep us from being limited. And we can see through the veils of all of these um, shortened, truncated words that are put together in a certain way to new speak us into doing what they fucking want us to do instead of what's moral. And I think what James was really saying in the end there is be honest with your words. When you fucking lie, you are destroying freedom for everyone, including yourself. So that's my last thoughts. And um, I'm going to play a video as we end this episode so we can all just kind of sneak out on our own time and leave any comments. But if anyone had something they were still hoping or dying to say, feel free to jump in now. Um, I know you had some stuff prepared. Sarah, if you want to share some of that now, I'd be open to that. Uh, well, it's it's not a whole bunch. It's really just the history. What I think I might do is actually write an article and um, right on. send it out to anybody who's interested. Um, but one of the things that I was able to pull out really quick was 
it you know starting with the spoken language not written was i think it it's the oldest is sanskrit uh which is from 5000 bc or no not the oldest uh i think it was tamil and then sumerian of course um three of the oldest and then there's like some literature some actual written literature i was actually i actually discovered um, just looking that up called the Thala Capian, <laughs> which I'm going to look a little bit more into. Um, but it's a collection of, of writings that was all like grammar and poetics and, you know, context, how to speak, you know, like putting it together, you know, as sort of a, uh, a baseline kind of, of, you know, how to put information together and like a lot of our ancient information like books and stuff that we have are written in that kind of way as a teaching tool in order to so i found that all really interesting um but i i i think i want to do quite a bit more research on this now too and like pull out you know some of the stuff you guys said as well but i wanted to just say like with what James was saying as well, that, you know, what everybody's saying and anybody who's listening as just like a last thought for me is that we shouldn't throw out anything as far as communication goes. And I know there's a lot of people who are doing that, especially on the internet and miscommunication is just ripe everywhere. And everybody wants to get triggered or, you know, over this thing or that thing. Um, and I don't think that we should, even though, you know, you've got a parasite class controlling a lot of these, these things that we would be using as some sort of guide to teach us something. At the same time, you know, that's all muddy, that's all corrupted in this way and that way. But you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You have to understand that, you know, <laughs> The parasite class didn't come before reality you know that came first so we want to take what information is there because and then you know channel that inner dick tracy in all of us and investigate what the reality of what a definition is or how to use a word pulling out the context or symbology or like the meaning of the symbology or whatever it is you know you know, use the resources that we have and dig and dig and dig and don't throw the baby out when instead of just going, oh, so like this handful of stuff is like a total lie. So let's just throw it all out. It must be all lies. You know, that's not the case. So that's a lot of the problem that I see with communication in general. So you know, I just wanted to add that, like what, because I, you know, I agree with James that freedom of speech is utmost important and we need to protect that because it's the only thing that we can really give our children is the right to enact, you know, their thoughts, emotions, and actions and give them freedom and freedom of speech and freedom of choice and all these things, they come together at the same goal. So that's what I wanted to add, but I, I look forward to some of the more doing more of this research and pulling out some of the stuff you guys said. Fantastic. I hope we inspired a whole nother presentation we can later watch. And I hope people that are um, watching this now or later are inspired. Please share um, this episode. And each of these people speaking here has work that can be shared. Connect with them on Facebook or Instagram. I know Sarah's on Facebook a lot and um chris at evolveconsciousness.org and uh awaken your mind and willkeller.com and brandon spencer's twitch and leslie powers um you know um alive thrive dot life fred fred with um his podcast is doing live shows a lot of time you can catch him on facebook i know and um other One channels network one great work network. There's so much awesome work out there. Um, James recently just um, announced his new podcast and we did an episode about two or three back. You can check out about the Voluntarist Academy. And um, so um, 
you know, Jerry's part of the One Great Work Warriors, and he's got his YouTube channel and starting some stuff on natural law. So, um, you know, be inspired and get out there and do this. I'm having all these people on here to speak because I find it more powerful than my voice. I learn when I hear all these people speak. And so being able to listen to different perspectives and aggregate them and put them together is how we get closer to the truth. And um, I find it to be respectful of other human beings and the energy and time they put in. So thank each one and every one of you. If I didn't mention you, I'd super appreciate your work and involvement and words. Thanks for coming. Appreciate you, Chris, and everyone here. Fantastic. Thanks, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chris, for hosting. Good night. Good night. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Peace. Good night. All right. Much love, y'all. What up, Angela? <laughs> words create thoughts. They can create beliefs in our mind. They can create concepts. They can create emotions. They can create you know, axioms, you know, in our thought forms, and they can create, you know, actions. Uh, so we should be conscious of the words that we use, and we should choose our, our words wisely, and we should become conscious, you know, uh, speakers. Words that we use should be reflective of our consciousness. So the understanding of words at their root level is key. And when we have the incorrect definitions of words, because like I said earlier, words create thoughts, words create beliefs, words create concepts within our mind. So if those definitions are incorrect, that's going to create incorrect thoughts, incorrect uh, axioms, incorrect beliefs. And that's where the distortion comes from. You know, so the truth is not about distortions. The truth is not about contortions or manipulation. Language has been something I've always been interested in and playing with words. It's like actually pretty important and especially for those trying to produce content and or whether it be through videos or write articles or do your essays, whether it be just, you know, writing them, putting them on Substack or, you know, having video essays to that. We want to have our words razor sharp so people can really uh, understand it. We're trying to sharpen our swords, you know, S words, you know, like take the S off of, you know, the sword and you have words. And uh, we got to understand that language is the battlefield and the dark occultists have, you know, done this for eons. Super important to know your words, the definitions of words like the back of your hand. And it's easier to express yourself once you know these words, you, under, you get a better picture of the world and that's what we're going to talk about is the importance of definition right we use definitions to understand our reality but what i wanted to talk about was the literary importance so we have to read but reading is how we, we, we become free how we understand words sharpen our words because they're spells and this brings me to the last roundtable discussion we had where Brandon talked about white wizardry. So we want to use our words for good. I looked up natural law because I didn't understand the meaning of those words. And now fast forward, I'm here doing a roundtable discussion with the One Great Work Warriors. So I really just encourage you to ask questions. If you don't know something, like it's okay to say, I don't know, you know, write it down, look it up. That's what I've been doing lately is if I don't understand something, I'm going to ask. A definition has the potential to provide clarity at their best. Definitions act like a compass, providing a lost reader with several potential directions from which to proceed for listeners. Words are not just what the dictionary says. So just reinforcing, please read etymology. It'll really you know, empower you.
Uh, you're seeing the meaning of words changing. Their meanings and definitions are changing right in front of us. They're slowly doing it. And that's scary to me because it, that, and that's the problem is that they're, they're actually doing this. Because the one thing I do know is that words are powerful. I mean, think about it. They can, they, they can invoke feelings. They can uh, invoke thought. They can incite a reaction, either for good or bad, just by words. So that, to me, that's so powerful. And um, that's the thing is that is that that's the danger too. Is that if you don't have a good understanding of words and their meanings, then they can be used against you. And this is the problem, is if you're if we're all assigning different meanings, what do you have? You have what we're talking about, in my you, opinion. Yeah, confusion. Confusion. Yeah. And you see, these are things like maybe when, like when you people start and first starting out, th learning the etymology of words is definitely part of the waking process. When like you say, wait a minute, like that's fucked up. <laughs> that's what that really means. You know, it's like, wait, how come I didn't know that? I love words. Um, that passion, words are fun. And when you start getting into this, you start um, seeing all the connections and similarities. To communicate with other beings. And it's a power. It's a way to leverage things in the world. So the way we use our words is crucially important in this reality because it's how we manipulate our environment. And if you think about it, like I'm saying, going back to little kids, I remember as, as the kids finally started getting the ability to use the words, we used to say, use your words, use your words, because they'd want to start throwing a fit when they couldn't get their way. They're like, nah. And then we'd say, use your words. What's going on? Communicate with us what you need, you know? And when the little kid has the ability to say, I'm hungry, or, you know, eh, then they don't have to go, bah! you know, but we have, we're right now we're living in a world of people that are still crying like babies. Not really having a control or understanding of the power of the syllables in their sentences and how each individual piece of every word is a jewel that has a history and uh and a context and you put them together in different ways and it means different things and um there's endless exploration and treasure in all these little parts and pieces of utterances that we make that change and control the world and environment we live in and currently that environment is one of slavery and we're speaking slave languages inside of a slavery system so the better we come to understand that language, because that very language is part of the main thing that's controlling us and our minds, is because that's how reality changes in this world. It's spoken into existence. The word became flesh. The word was God. Damn it. When we're talking about language, we're dealing with you know, like we say it, words, we're dealing with speech, we're dealing with conversation, we're dealing with communication. So we are talking about, you know, the tongue and and how vocal cords because our words are vibratory pieces of energy that go out into existence. And that's why I say is we should be clear and precise with the words that we use. And I'm all a fan of shutting the fuck up. I think that's something that a lot of us need to practice and think before we speak. Every word that we have, every word that we use in all of the language is it encrypts something, you know? It is it is represent it is representative of something in reality, in the objective world. Doesn't matter if it's a noun, doesn't matter if it's a verb, we are talking about something. And that's why we try to communicate these things. That's why, you know, when it comes to speech, when it comes to language, we are the only ones that we know, human beings that are capable of it. So it, so it shows the higher states of consciousness. It shows the higher states of awareness and the responsibility 
that comes along with this tool. So grammar is the inventing and the combination of symbols because words are nothing more but symbols. You know, symbols are a representation and a decryption of things in reality. When it came to you know, understanding the importance of language, of literature, because we are trying to describe things. And that's what man has been doing since day one is, is, is trying to make sense of things. Uh, so when Rick talked about, you know, um, um, you know, you know, everyone having their own um, interpretation of words, that in and of itself is why we are in the position that we're in with all of this confusion, all of this ignorance, all of this distortion. Because if I'm, you know, saying, well, this word means this definition toward me and you're saying this definition means that toward you, how can we communicate? How can we harmonize? How can we come to understand? You can't. We're talking about words that were synonymous with morality, good, justice, and natural law. And the reason why this and the reason why this was so is because things that was considered higher in elevation that pointed toward the sun, they were considered upright. They were good. They were moral. Because again, the sun was always associated with knowledge, with light, with higher states of consciousness. So when we truly understand something, we are imploring that the light, the light, the clarity is coming in. Therefore, it gives you elevation. It puts you in a position of power to make a choice. You know, it puts you in that position of power so you can make that correct choice, hopefully the moral choice. Talking about the right thing and actually know what right is. So, you know, having the correct understanding of these words is so important, so important, because without that, and I'm gonna keep saying this, we will be ignorant of the objective world we will be ignorant of ourselves and we will be ignorant of our natural law. Going over the five domains of language, there is phonology, the, the rules of speech sounds, how phonemes are used, you know, and uh, like think of, you know, uh, I'm in correspondence with uh, people in France, and those are francophones, you know. Anglophones is English, right? So, yeah, I'm sure people understand that basic uh, understanding. And then morphology, the rules of word structure, how morphemes are used. And then we go to syntax, you know, the rules of, you know, how our structures of sentences are formed, right? And then uh, you guys mentioned semantics, right? The rules relating to the meanings of languages, of language. So, that corresponds as well to the air elements in regards to, you know, how we are sharpening our swords and to really be wielding the sword of truth, that double-edged sword that, that cuts through the bullshit. And that's going to correspond as to how we have correspondence or communication with other people, right? So these are things we've uh, mentioned in previous um, discussions and not like this is our forte per se and that's an interesting word right there because that you know in french uh it means uh, strong and what is like fort take the e off and drop the accent of course you know yeah. fort means like strong a uh, stronghold rather right and so yeah it's just beautiful how these things you know line up when you you understand uh yeah the root words of, of things and how they correspond between uh, different languages. I, I love that shit. But what I don't love is that Orwellian uh, double newspeak or whatever the hell that people are all caught up in, right? Like the language, we've got to keep going down these trails and beating up these words. And sharpening too, process is a slow process. You're like with a whetstone going down to finer and finer grades. It's a lot of rubbing, right? 
like so you're refining as we're talking to each other and having conversations with people and practicing our rhetoric we're refining refining our sword and making it sharper by practicing with it by you know shaving the edges off by keep on working it it's not just an overnight thing you, you make a sword by beating on it over a period of time Thank you.